Minister for Energy and Emissions Reduction, Angus Taylor, thanks for your time. How concerned are you reading the findings of this report about particularly the implications for more severe storms, more severe flooding and droughts and fires, particularly for our nation? Oh, look, there's a, this is a very important report and it highlights the imp enormous importance of bringing down emissions but doing it in a way which is going to strengthen our economy, not weaken it, and bringing other countries around the world down that pathway as well. Uh, we know that about two-thirds of emissions comes from the developing world, um, and it's crucial that we support them with the technologies that are going to allow them to bring down their emissions in a way which is practically achievable, Kieran. Uh, and that's important not just for Australia, but for those countries right across the world who want to see... Rising incomes, strengthening economies, but they also want to see reducing emissions. That's why our focus on technology, not taxes, is so important. It's why it is the right pathway, and it's why uh, we're convinced it's the right pathway, not just for Australia, but for the world. The, the world, though, is talking a lot about ambition. Mm. Boris Johnson and Joe Biden calling, about, calling for urgency and ambition, as has your former colleague Matthias Cormann, the Secretary-General of the OECD, saying there needs to be greater ambition. Are you and the Prime Minister cognisant of that yeah, demand we're, internationally? We're ambitious to meet and beat our targets. At the end of the day, the only thing that matters for global emissions is bringing them down achievement. Um, and we have a, a, a very strong track record on achievement. We met and beat our Kyoto targets. Many other countries didn't, or they pulled out of Kyoto. We stuck the course and we beat our targets by 459 million tonnes. So that's almost a year's worth of emissions. We're on track to meet and beat our 2030 targets. So will we've trajectory... updated our projections each year and we've improved them every year we've been in government. So will you, will you update then that 2030 trajectory, that target? We specifically that target. We update our projections every year, Kieran, and we will do that in advance of Glasgow, as we always do, uh, and we've always seen improvement. To put it in perspective, the improvement in the last two years combined has been the equivalent of taking every car off the road in Australia for 15 years. In terms of the, the ambition, though, that's what the world is calling for. The, the President of the United States says it's the decisive decade... Will you be more ambitious? Well, so I, will I the government have more ambition in terms of where it's heading? We are ambitious, but let me tell you what really counts, is, if you read the report closely, is outcomes. That's the thing that's going to matter most of all, is delivery. Uh, now, countries can talk about whatever they like, but they need a plan to get the outcomes. And that's what's distinctive about the Australian way. We've always had plans uh, from our government to achieve strong outcomes, and we've met and beaten those plans. Uh, and as a result, delivered extraordinary outcomes. Now, we're seeing it on the ground now. I, mean, as I talked about solar PV. We're seeing farmers changing their farming practices uh, to, to absorb emissions. We've seen manufacturing changing through energy efficiency gains right across the country. I mean, these are practical actions that are being taken. We're supporting that with significant investment, $20 billion we've committed uh, to technology-based development and deployment. Uh, that'll bring forward about $80 billion across clean hydrogen, clean steel and aluminium, stored energy. Snowy 2 is a good sure. example of a project like that. And these technologies are the way, not just for Australia, but for the world, Kieran. The Prime Minister says that, and, and this is something you've argued, that you're not going to commit to something without a, a, a plan in terms of how much it's going to cost and so on. Uh, where are your officials at in terms of modelling net zero by 2050? Will we see that before those important climate talks in Glasgow in November? Well, I'll make a couple of points about that. The first is we don't write blank cheques because you're writing blank cheques for the Australian people that have to be paid. So we're not going to do that. What we are going to do is continue to drive sensible plans. And we've said uh, that we will uh, release our long-term strategy in advance of of Glasgow, that will build on work that we've been doing. That focus will continue but to that build 2050 on... 2050 modelling and, and costs? Well, as I said, will long we see more on that? Long-term strategy will continue to, to work on that and, and release updates. We're due to update the low emissions technology statement uh, in the next little while, which will continue to build on the work we've done on technologies last year, which you, of course, have seen. So, you know, this work is always ongoing. And, and this is the Australian approach. We're very transparent. 
Uh, we focus on plans and we focus on delivery, and that's what the world needs right across countries, right across no, the I, world. I, I totally understand the point about the technology, and it is your, uh, that, that's your, your mantra. I, I get that. But internationally, you look at the G7, uh, most of our allies, key allies, trading partners, they're all committing to net zero by 2050. I, I don't see how the government could go to that summit and not at least commit to that. Well, we've made it very clear we want to get to net zero. We want to get there as soon as possible and preferably by 2050, Kieran. There's no ambiguity about this. What matters is our cut. Well, I, th- this I think, is, I this think is, there is. Well, they probably, there, there is you'll, you'll cop a bit of heat internationally if you don't commit to that. So, so you know, at the end of the day, what counts, Kieran, is outcomes. Mm-hmm. You know, politicians make lots of promises and we're often criticised for making promises. Actually, what we do is not just making promises but delivering, meeting and beating those those goals. On the, that emissions reduction, most of it, do you concede most of that has been done via farming changes, land use no, it's a range changes? Of... It's not, we've actually seen our energy system increase its emissions intensity. Well, no, that's not right. I mean, we've seen a 5% reduction in emissions in the national electricity market in the last year alone. Um, and uh, demand has, has remained very strong despite COVID. Um, So we are seeing very rapid reductions in our electricity grid. Solar's playing a really key part of that. We've got the highest installed solar PV in the world, Kieran. Um, So that's playing a really important role. Matt Canavan says it's the farming. Well, farming carried the can basically from 2005 to 2012 in terms of emissions reduction. You're saying that's not the lion's share of the emissions fall? No, I've already highlighted the important role that farmers have been playing uh, in, in bringing down our emissions. There's no doubt about that. And, and they have played a, a, a crucial role and will continue to in the future. We're seeing soil carbon projects now uh, across Australia which not only uh, absorb more carbon in our soil but at the same time raise agricultural productivity. I mean, this is uh, fantastic stuff. But it's broader than that. It's our electricity grid. It's our manufacturers. We're seeing extraordinary energy efficiency in manufacturing. We've seen energy efficiency in the transport sector. Uh, we've seen a rapid uptake of hybrid vehicles in, in the last year alone. Um, and that will continue. There's no doubt about that. So across the board, we're seeing real change. Uh, it's practical. It's happening. Uh, it's being chosen by consumers because it's good for them or farmers and manufacturers because it's good for them. And that will continue to be our focus. And, and finally, you've got this international pressure on the one hand. Internally, you've got the nationals pressure from Barnaby Joyce, the new deputy prime minister, n- newly returned nationals leader. Can you manage both? Can you navigate that yes. tightrope? It yes. is a bit and, of a tightrope. And, 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 the, and the reason is this. It's if you deploy clean energy technologies, low emissions technologies that strengthen the economy at the same time as bringing down emissions. Uh, You can break the trade-off, Kieran. And this is how we do it, not just in Australia, but around the world. This trade-off and and the, 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 the tension between maintaining strong sectors, jobs growth and investment and bringing down emissions, we can break that trade-off with strong technology investment and development. That's what's happening in this country. That's what we need to make sure happens right across the world. Uh, And that's how we break the impasse that we've seen in this area of policy in the past. Mr Taylor, appreciate your time as always. Thanks. Good on you, Kerry.